Hi everyone, my name is Madeline Gardner. I am the External Comms Manager here at Jazz Lincoln Center. I wanna welcome you to another episode of Jazz Intersections, where we chat with everyone from all walks of life, all intersecting at Jazz. So I'm very, very excited uh, to introduce today's special guest. We're gonna talk all things Big Band Holidays, which is premiering tomorrow, Saturday, December 19th at 7 p.m. You can watch it through demand uh, just through December 26th. Big Band Holidays will feature brand new performances, never seen before, just filmed, COVID safe, of course, uh, by the Jazz Lincoln Center Orchestra with Wynton Marsalis, and will showcase some of the most dynamic jazz vocalists on the scene, such as Catherine Russell, Kurt Elling, Ruben Blades, Ashley Pizzotti, and more. So without any further ado, maybe some like, you know, hand cop emojis, Santa emojis, whatever emojis you'd like. Please welcome Wynton Marsalis. Hey, Winston. All right, now, what are we talking about? Oh, we're talking all things big band holidays. I wore my Christmas lights just for you to get festive, get in the mood. I'm very excited for tomorrow. I, I don't, I need some Christmas gear. I don't have it. Okay. I'll, I'll send well, this to you. You can wear this. <laughs> we, we, we're getting it ready. We, we, we're doing it. We're can still, you... we're still mixing. <laughs> That's, I, I, it's truly incredible. I'd love to hear some of, I mean, of course, as I'm sure many people tuning in right now, I know personally Big Band Holidays, the big, amazing concert that we put on every year is one of my highlights. So can you talk a bit about the process of, you know, I know you and the team are like, we have to put something on this year and what it's been like, what, what people Ooh. should expect. <laughs> we put so much work and time into this one. We, we went down home. We have our in-house our in -house film crew with a combination of younger generation and older generation. They got me out of my comfort zone, doing <laughs> duets and all kind of stuff I didn't want to do. But it, it's very creative and interesting what they came up with. We had some of our young musicians from Juilliard playing fantastically in the club. And of course, the orchestra arrangements, Chris Crenshaw, uh, Victor Goins wrote great arrangements. Sherman Irby wrote a very interesting little drummer boy. Uh, we have a couple of archival videos that brought a tear to my eye. One of Nutcracker Suite from night from 2013, I think, uh, where I could see pictures of me when I had hair that will never come back. We had uh, also Zat You featuring uh, Alexis uh, Morass. She's just 18, unbelievable mm -hmm. poise and the, the kind of creativity. And uh, just the new arrangements, the things we did live, but we worked on them. You know, we just challenging each other. Vincent did an unbelievable arrangement of uh, Let It Snow with Ashley singing, she's, she, she's uh, a very difficult trumpet parts and stuff like that. We're messing with mm -hmm. each other. Marcus Printer did an arrangement with Kurt Ellen graciously, graciously sang with us. He has us singing all kind of stuff. I don't know how, how our singing was, but um, every, everything, really, a, a lot of it was uh, Carlos did fantastic Winter Wonderland with, uh, with Ruben Blades, great, mm. you know, all the per percussion. And Carlos really worked on his. You know, he's, he's a stickler for his. He makes sure that everything is so much, it's so much work. One day I'm gonna let everybody see the notes, just just mixed notes that our our fantastic engineer Todd Todd Whitelock and I, we go back and forth day and night. I gave him a long list this morning. You know, I said this is a gift for you, friend. And we uh, <laughs> and you and so, Todd have been working together for a really long time. Uh, yeah, I knew Todd when he just started off. We all, we work with the great senior producer, Steve Epstein, one of the great mm -hmm. geniuses of producing. And Todd was an assistant to, to Steve. He was in his 20s. He was a kid. So, yeah, we've been at it. He's not in his 20s now. He has kids in their <laughs> 20s. So, yeah, we're very uh, oh, very close. Everything is very familiar. Mm. You know, Todd's, Todd's son is a fantastic guitarist. And like Carlos, just to see Carlos' kids grow up, um, you know, it's, yeah. I don't know what to say, Carlito, it's, and it's Christmas, so it's a family affair, you know. We, we, well, and speaking of family affairs, how did it feel to be back and playing in the House of Swing to film for this? Well, you know, nobody's in there, it's empty, so it feel, feels like it felt when we first first uh, erected it, and mm. we would give tours and nothing was there, and we said, wow, when we get people in here, we're going to have this type of feeling, but... Um, we're trying to bring the feeling, and the, the house swing still swinging. So, you know, we were in the atrium, and, and it, it, we were in the appeal room, great fantastic shots of the cities, the city band, and the, the young folks were, were in Dizzy's. They did great just to see kids that had grown up in our, some in our education programs and who I first heard 
when they were freshmen in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, Summer Camargo, great trumpet player, the great Isaiah Thompson, he's just playing all kinds of piano. And uh, Philip Norris, TJ, they all can play. Abdias, yeah. Armenteros. Um, I just feel with, uh, with, with love and feeling for them. And, and of course, Catherine Russell, we're saying in rehearsal, Summer Camargo is, I think Summer is 18. We're saying between Catherine Russell, whose father, uh, whose father's band, Louis Russell, Louis Armstrong, took over her father's band in the 30s. Mm -hmm. His father became Louis Armstrong's music director. And her mother was unbelievable guitarist, bassist, composer. That uh, Carlene Ray, that we had the whole history, vir virtually the entire history of music in one room. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a labor of love of all of us. I'm even talking about Adam and Chloe and our, mm -hmm. our film crew, everybody. I mean, well, we're working. We, we're trying to give people something special and different. We have different elements. We have at home. We did three at home uh, recordings with the band. And uh, we, we, we did um, live when we, when we played in the, in the appeal room and in the atrium and in Dizzy's. Mm -hmm. And we did archival. And we have people talking. And some of it is moving, members of the band uh, talking about Christmases they remember. And some things about music, some are familiar. It's interesting. And and if you're just tuning in, we're talking all things Big Band Holidays, which is premiering tomorrow, Saturday, December 19th. You can watch it on demand through December 26th, and you can go to jazz.org slash Big Band Holidays to find out more and buy your virtual ticket. And also the special treat for tuning in right now, everybody, and we're gonna, we'll put it in the chat in just a minute and pin it. We're offering all the viewers right now who are tuning in at $20 tickets because we would love for you to join us. So that will be pinned in the comments shortly and you can use the, the promo code intersections as a little treat. But uh, don't wanna t I don't wanna take up too much more time here, but I do wanna ask you a, a couple more questions with Big Band Holidays and we'll get into some more questions. I know people are dying to ask some questions in the comments. You know, you mentioned you have a lot of these uh, young jazz stars of tomorrow that join you for this and that you work with and that you've mentored and you've watched, you know, as a young high school students, you know, taking part of essentially Ellington or, or mentoring them, what's it like to be able to watch that growth and then now have it, them incorporated in this big, our big, big band holidays? Well, it's great. And, and a lot of people are mentoring them, you know, first mm -hmm. and foremost, their parents, but also their band directors, their teachers, other instructors. You know, I talk, I talk a lot about the music and stuff, but I'm, I'm not the only one. And many times I'm trying to just, they're already fantastic when I see them, and they already they they talk in the in the in the film they talk about they they're growing up I think Isaiah and Summer talk, and uh, they they come from some musical families others different traditions. Philip Norris, a young bass player, his mother uh, plays plays trumpet, so you know we and she's a, a teacher and I mean I I love them and and it's mm. it's a system that we all uh, will have grown up in. It's difficult times for for younger people to be to be confident and to feel good about what's going on, you know, because we're struggling in our country. Our leadership is poor. And there's a lot of pressure put on them to, to lead and to assume mantles of leadership when they should be confident in the progression from generation to generation. But since we set the generations against each other to sell stuff to younger people, it gives them sometimes the illusion that youth is a quality. Mm. You know, you're young because you're young. If you want it to be some quality, you have to figure something out. And with these young people, I mean, they play so well. Todd White, like our engineer, was writing me last night. He puts fire because he's from, he grew up seeing Isaiah and them grow up. And, and his, his son went as a New Jersey Jazz House kids. So he's always fire. This is the hottest thing on the show. <laughs> these young people, I saw Isaiah. I might have been the first person to record him when he was 12 or 13 years old. So, you know, we look at them with a lot of pride and feeling. But it's a community of, 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 of people who have uh, participated in their development. Mm. Absolutely. And, and keeping in, in the theme of all holiday things, I saw some, a question there before too. Do you remember what the first holiday song is that you learned to play? Or what's, what's a holiday song that also brings you comfort? You know, probably the easiest one. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just some of the hard ones. I remember being a junior in high school and one of my teachers asked me to play for the, for the class. And I played one class. They said, well, go play for some other classes. And I was playing the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting, on an mm. open fire. I just, I was playing a flugelhorn. I'll never forget it. Then I, I had my 1970s uniform on. 
my bell bottom pants, my polyester shirt with the staff collars and my big afro. Incredible. So I went from class to class playing chestnuts roasting on an open fire. And I think um, Sleigh Ride is one that we always played in bands. So it was not the first one I played, but I remember Sleigh Ride because the trumpet players get to sound like a horse. We make a, a windy trumpet players all over, all over the, the United States, if not the world. We love Sleigh Ride because you might have a Christmas concert. Your band might be one of the worst bands you ever heard or played in your high school band or your, your junior high band. But every trumpet player wants to make that horse sound on the trumpet. So Sleigh Ride, that's, that's a classic. It can be played in orchestra, bands, jazz band. It's, it's one of those songs, Leroy Anderson, that touches on a lot of different aspects of our, of our music. Has there, I saw a question before too, has there been, and we've talked a little bit about before about, about books and reading and, you know, reading during quarantine. Is there any, what have you been reading lately? Is there any, any, anything to suggest for anyone watching right now? You know, I've been working so much. I haven't been really. <laughs> just, reading just, music we're charts? To, <laughs> we're trying to survive. I'm, I'm reading mixed notes. I'm not, mm. I'm not, I'm not reading anything, but what we can do to make it through this pandemic and to, to guide our institution and be intelligent with decisions and just try to, I'm doing a lot of just listening to people and seeing what's going on. I'm, this last month has not been too much reading going on. Well, can you, can you tell us a bit about the process? You mentioned, you know, part of the Big Band Holidays concert, there's a lot of at home, you know, recordings which, which you and the band have been doing throughout the entire pandemic. Can you just talk a bit about the process of what that's like and maybe some <laughs> tips and tricks for anyone watching that's hoping to do any of that? The first thing is we said to each other, we have to make this one better than we made the last one. So everybody, <laughs> get the, we all have to get the right microphone and set up in a place in our home where we can play into a dry space so that the sound is not too echoey. And we have to be really uniform with how we set our files and we have to wear the same clothes have to get our backgrounds right. So we're calling Adam and getting our background right. We're talking about sound and mics. Now, I'll give you one funny story. On Winter Wonderland, Carlos had written a solo for me. So I recorded it. And I said to Solo, he didn't like it. He said, that's not, that's not right, Papa. He calls me Papa when he's telling me something. That's not right, Papa. I said, well, what's wrong with it? That's supposed to be high. It's supposed to be exciting. Is that exciting what you're playing, man? That's... And so I, he said, you got to play high and exciting. Man, let's go back to the records, man. You know what the style is. Go back to the records. So, I, so okay, I, I, I tried the, the, the next day to record it. And I was playing high note, high note, high notes, four or five versions. And I was looking at it. It still wasn't right. Finally, I got it right. And I went to send the, the, my file in, but it was so loud for the microphone that it was feeding back, and I couldn't, I couldn't send the file in. So I said, man, I, I did five of these things. My chops are gone. I can't send the file in. He said, he said why? They know I'm technically challenged. He said, okay, Papa, I'm going to come to your house. Now, he lives in New Jersey, so he don't want mm -hmm. to come to my house. I'm going to come to your house, and we're going to record it. So he came all the way to my house. And he set his rig up because he's he's really into it, right? So his that's why his is so meticulous. He's helping Todd with with lining all the music up. I mean, Todd, Carlos is a godsend, and he's also calling me all the time when something is wrong. It doesn't have to be his tune, man. I don't think this is right. So we played it. I played one solo. Oh now my chops are gone by now. So I played one, and he didn't like it. He was like, "Do another one." <laughs> so I did another one. He, Do another one. So I did a third one. <laughs> I'm doing this in between. He said, is that what you want? That's how you want to be documented? <laughs> so I did another one. And it was right. He said, that's it, Papa. Send me that one. And he was getting ready to leave. And he said, you want to do Vince's? <laughs> so Vince's has a lot of high notes. I said, man, Vince music is always difficult. I said, I don't know, man. He said, come on, man. Let's do it right now. So I said, OK. So I was able to do Vince's and get, get, my, get the, the, the uh, Carlos's out, the solo out. And one night, but we take it very seriously. And then even last night, Carlos was calling me saying he thinks a solo is in the wrong, on the wrong side of the beat because these things are placement. Mm. And I said I don't think so. So the, the band member in question, he called him, and he said, oh, he said I think you put Ryan's solo in the wrong place. I said no, I don't think so. He said I think so, man. So he he called Ryan, and Ryan said no, it's in the right place because I had played my solo and went on the other side of the beat, purposely mm. turned it over on the beat. So Ryan heard what, what, I, what I had done, and in the middle of his solo, he turned his phrase over on the other side of the beat. And it's, uh, I don't know, I, I, could, I, could, I could go on and on. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of fun, though, when you embrace the challenge of it. And also, you have uh, so unbelievable musicians to work with. Chris Crenshaw, mm -hmm. 
we were rehearsing, and for some reason, everybody was writing train arrangements. They sound like trains, you know, but the trains and with Christmas. Victor wrote one that was a train. Sherman wrote one that had a sound like on that Coleman. And then uh, Chris turned in his. I needed it to be slow, and it sounded like a train. So I, I didn't want to call him. I'm saying, you call him. No, no, man, you call him. I said, okay, I'll call him. I said, Chris, man, you know, can we get, the, this sounds like a train. We need it to be slow. He said, but I, it was my fault because I should have told him when I gave him the range, but let's, let's do this one slow. He said, man, I got something to do at one o'clock. Now it was 10 o'clock when I called him. He said, okay, okay, man, I'll do it. He turned in an arrangement in, in an hour and a half. And you have to hear this arrangement he wrote. <laughs> we all start laughing because we know he's a little genius. But mm -hmm. when, you, when, we, when we played this arrangement, we all, Ted and I, we were, we were like, where does this guy come from? Just the craftsmanship of Chris, hour and a half arrangement. He just sketched it out of, I'll be home for Christmas. So when you mm -hmm. hear that one, that's, somebody did that in an hour and a half. That's incredible. And I will say one of my favorite, I mean, Chris Crenshaw is just, you know, obviously yeah. so incredibly talented and something fun that you can actually, anyone viewing right now can go check out on our Instagram. When he did, we were having the JLCO members do uh, social media takeovers, which has been so much fun. And Chris Crenshaw, I found out, does amazing impressions. He did an Elmer Fudd impression. I mean, he can do it all. What can he do? That's my real question. He's, yeah, he's unbelievable. He can sing, <laughs> he can conduct. He has perfect time in the rehearsal. We, don't, we were laughing in, in this rehearsal because he's not, he's, not, yeah, he's not in New York. So, you know, COVID, mm -hmm. he can't be with us. I never count a song off in rehearsal. I'm always saying, what's, what's the tempo, Chris? Or what, Chris? So we were in rehearsal now. I said, Chris? He said, what is it? It's at 240. It's Chris. So we, we started to laugh. But yeah, he can, you know, he has perfect pitch. I mean, he can play all kinds of styles. He's like a historian. In the arranging classes, he's doing with Todd Stoll. Todd calls me every time a class is done and goes, Man, let me tell you what Chris did last night. <laughs> so it's always some story about how Chris knows every page on the score, how Chris refers to stuff and knows all the voicings. And Chris, Chris is like a godsend and a blessing. Yeah. And I, I think on our band call yesterday, I was telling everybody just the depth of love and respect I have for them and the type of work that they've been doing and the quality of that work. Mm. And, and speaking of you know, quality of work, and you're talking about you know, going back and forth to, to record these things, how do you know when something is done, how, you know, especially when you're able to control that, like, how can you just be like, okay, it's done. That's it. Let me tell you how I know. Todd Whitelock sends me an email and that email says, we're done with this one. <laughs> That's our code because I'll keep working on it. So yeah. he waits. And then when he gets down to that, he says, we're done with this one. And it has a period, a certain way at the end of it. That mm -hmm. means let's move on. And I always, I go with him. If he says, we're done, mm -hmm. we're done. And we've been well, working with each other for so many years. Yeah. And this man will do so much. I have to tell people that when 9-11 when happened, Todd Whitelock drove. We, there was no flying. We had to do a recording in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. He caught a plane to Detroit. And he drove with a, with a couple of people. He did a lot of driving from Detroit to Los Angeles right into the session that we recorded. Wow. So... And that's, you know, that's, that's, on, that's 20 years ago. And we knew each other well then. So, you know, we challenge each other. And we, and, and, you know, on, on a Saturday, no, both of our fathers passed away during COVID in this time, having COVID. So we, we like, we, and, and you know, we, we, what can we do? We good natured, but we, we, we can cry about it. We do that, but we laugh about it too. And we, we, we have our tradition that we have what we imbibe in this time. So this is one of those ones where we stand up for these last three or four days burning a lot of midnight oil at this age, you know, we, we laugh about it. That's beautiful to have that, you know, lifelong friendship and partnership in music, just to yeah. be able to, you know, and when to have that control of, to be able to keep on working on something, but to trust someone enough to be like, okay, yeah. they're yeah. telling no. me it's done. It's done. No, I love I, him. When, when he says that, that's it. And I wanted to, I want to take a couple of, make sure you type in any questions right there in the comments you have for Wednesday about Big Ben holidays or anything else music related. And I wanted to ask you something, you know, as we're heading, we're in the holiday season and we're finishing up 2020, uh, 2020 which has been a very interesting year. Uh, do you have any kind of words of wisdom, advice or hopefulness or whatever, whatever it might be going into 2021 and looking towards the future? You know, I think that uh, this tests our internal resources, and, and I just always feel that I know that you've had a lot of you've had a lot of bad happen, but you've also had a lot of your extended family come around you. Don't mm. don't slap their hands away. And if you've had to ask people for things, it's good to be to be grateful and to 
have to be humble and to and to and give people a chance to, to give people a chance to help you. Mm. Believe me, I've reached out to more of our friends to keep us going and will continue to reach out. And at first it's it's difficult, you know, if you're prideful, but then when you realize that uh you're not out here alone. There's something the great piano player Marcus Roberts taught me years ago when I was young and was so so embattled it was impossible to trust people. Mm. And uh Marcus said, Look, man, you can't make it out here alone. You need to call on people and you need to rely on them. And they're gonna be there for you, but you gotta call on them. And uh I, it's been difficult, you know, and for for some people it's so difficult. There's no way to paint a, a, a happy face on it. But the only thing I always say is reach out if you need help. You know, ask and it shall be given. Absolutely. Speak and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Sometimes you gotta go to scripture. So whether you believe in the in the whatever you believe in, this is a big time of everybody wanting to be as tribal as they can be about what they believe. There's a universal truth that, that lies in all beliefs. And and seek that. And seek mm. seek comfort in knowing that we have a we have a common humanity that we all share. And sometimes you carry in people and sometimes they gotta carry you. And I mm. I've, I've found great uh great solace in being carried. That was, thank you for sharing that. That's it's hard to it's hard to to have ask for that help for people to really not even rely on, you know, it's sometimes like, oh, I don't want to ask for help. I don't want to. But don't slap yeah. that hand away. Don't thank slap it. That. And it's not only financial, it's mm. emotional, it's spiritual. And a lot, many times it's something you don't want to do. Somebody you don't want to reach out to. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it works out. Sometimes it doesn't like going to a dance when I was growing up. Sometimes you ask somebody to dance, they tell you no. You got to collect yourself and go to the next person. <laughs> That's right. You know, if everybody had to tell you yes, it wasn't, it wasn't a dance. You know, it was slavery. That's right. <laughs> so, you can't have the good without the bad. You, you can't. Know? You can't. You know, you can't tell me no, that okay, I'm not, I'm not asking. I don't, I'm not taking a chance. Sometimes in New Orleans, they'd be cold, too. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they send you away bruised. You have hurt feelings, but Mm. at that time you know i don't know <laughs> well i wanted to i saw someone asked do you have any uh funny or or memorable stories about growing up in the marsalis household christmas related or I mean, holiday I, related yeah i have many about breaking 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 my brother's toys all kind of stuff we, <laughs> <gasps> we, no. you know, we had a bunch of boys so we were always fighting and breaking stuff and me and my older me and my older brother branford would always terrorize our younger brothers who were three or four years younger than us, Ellis and Delphio. We'd be trying to break their toys and <laughs> just whatever. We always played football on on Christmas. We put me me and me and Delphio against Branford and Ellis. And whoever whoever my father would be stationary quarterback. So whoever won would accuse him of cheating. And whoever won would accuse him of whoever lost would accuse him of cheating. And and he couldn't win no matter what. He was one of the world's worst quarterbacks too. He be and he was so he wasn't he wasn't cheating. That's why I learned how to throw a football young. I said, man, if I have kids, I'm definitely not throwing passes like these to people. And it's my, it's my one regret that I didn't see my father before he passed away because I always said I was going to tell him, hey, man, those games that we were playing in the backyard, you wasn't cheating. You just was the world's worst quarterback. <laughs> but, you know, he'd be out there with us, and then we'd come inside, we'd be fighting about, you know, the game. And it was nah. We had a lot of good, a lot of fun. We have some good gumbo. My mama would cook all kind of stuff, and then we go to different people in our neighborhood's house to see. Then we argue about whose mama made the best gumbo. So then mm -hmm. it'd be you know, and if you had like gifts like walkie talkies and stuff, those things would be broken in two or three days. You see everybody on the street with their walkie talkie on one day. Then a week later, the walkie talkies was stuff like that. The stuff I remember. That's fun. That's that's the memorable stuff and. I did see. I had some people ask me for advice for begin beginner musicians. How to start as a beginner musician? Just just begin. It's like how you you learned mm -hmm. how to ride a bike. You know, somebody pushed you out in the street and you fell down and you said, "Boy, that hurt," but it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I learned how to swim. I don't, I don't really know how to swim. All my brothers can swim. They should have threw me in that pool like they did. Well, don't do that. <laughs> Get in the shallow water. But I think you know you you just. Get somebody that you like, get your Amish. You need like an initial lesson to make sure your setup is right. That's the only mm -hmm. thing about starting. You don't want, if you're a trumpet player, if you play brass, you don't want to start off with the wrong looking. Uh, and if you don't have a teacher or somebody, look at a picture of somebody who you know really can play and just put your mm -hmm. setup like theirs. And uh, 
just start doing your thing. You know, it's always better to start with a lesson, though, so you make sure your just fundamental building blocks are good. But I always believe start with the joy of music. Don't start with, like, the theory and the form and the rules. Look at it like you look at a baby babbling. Mm. Imagine telling a baby, no, no, you don't, you don't put the jar in there or don't use the, don't use the verb at that. Right. You just anything come out of baby's mouth. You saying, oh, listen to that baby said, I want you to go to the store and get me some more. You know, baby. So when you when you learn and stuff, you're like a baby. Just have a good time. Play with stuff. Mm. And now you, the comments are going crazy. Everyone wants your gumbo recipe, Winton. What do you say to that? Everyone wants you to drop <laughs> your gumbo routine. I said my mama was making it. I didn't say it was me. <laughs> Me and that, that, that's where our similarities ended. I could, man, if I could make gumbo like my mom, I'd off open a restaurant. <laughs> Frank, I got Frank Stewart's recipe. So I can put that with Frank Stewart can make some well, gumbo I bet too. That's now. real good. He's... He ain't even from New Orleans. I hate to admit it. Frank, <laughs> Frank, make a, Frank got a cold pot of gumbo. He brought me one about a week ago. Ooh, it was good too. Oh, gumbo sounds amazing right about now. Frank, well, we're going we're gonna to wrap things up in just a moment. Everyone, thank you so much for watching and tuning in. I want to remind everyone to please, please, please tune in. We're so excited to share with you Big Band Holidays premiering tomorrow at 7 p.m. ET, and it'll be on demand through December 26th. If you go to jazz.org slash Big Band Holidays, you can find out more. And is it, thank you, everyone, for joining. And Winston, if you want any last words to share with everyone before we head out. It's going to be down home. So I want y'all to check it out because we definitely went down home for it. Absolutely. Well, Winton, I know that you've been working nonstop, so I appreciate you taking the time to stop by. I always love chatting yeah. with you. My favorite guest always. Oh, hey. I don't, even if you patronize me, it, it sounds good. And <laughs> you know, it's great. it's great to see you. Always nothing but love and have a great holidays. You too. See All you right. soon. All right now. Bye. Maddie, Maddie. Maddie.